Okay, everybody, it is 12.05 Central Time. The five-minute rule is in effect, so we're going to go ahead and, uh, and get started. So a few housekeeping notes before we, uh, before we move on. Uh, there's, a, there's a speech bubble on your Join Me panel. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask the question to the whole group, or you can uh, ask uh, individual folks as well. So if you want to send me a question, you can uh, just tag, uh, tag me as a presenter. Um, or you can ask the question for uh, everybody. I, pr I, I prefer you ask it to everybody so everybody can see the question and they can hear the answer. So um, awesome. Well, let's get started. So thanks for having me out, Miranda and Cindy, contacting me to do a webinar for you guys um, for uh, what I've called it as searching with wizards. Um, that's not official. If you guys like it, you can keep it. If you don't, throw it right back. No big deal. Um, but uh, it's a really cool a way for you all to kind of collaborate and keep things fresh. So it's a really cool idea. I'm glad to be a part of it. You have a really cool lineup coming around. Uh, Derek Zeller, Carmen Hudson, both really strong sorcerers. Um, they're going to share some things with you as well. So uh, yeah, yeah. So a little bit about myself. I'm a practitioner. I'm a sorcerer. I work for Northrop Grumman where I focus on uh, aerospace systems. Um, so yeah, I dig working for Northrop Grumman. It's a cool company to source for. It keeps me engaged. Um, I'm from Houston, so uh, another note is we're experiencing a tropical depression, so if there's any technical difficulties, we'll jump right back in. Um, but uh, it looks pretty good so far. So uh, I've been in the business of uh, recruiting since about 2007. I'm a uh, military veteran. I worked in the military for about 13 years, did push-ups for a living. Um, and that's actually where I got my first uh, recruiting start. They wanted me to specifically focus on military intelligence and uh, signal uh, communications um, folks for the military. So um, I've got a little bit of both corporate and agency experience, um, and I've been known to write a blog every once in a while. So um, yeah, that's just a, a little bit about, about me. So this is what we'll be talking about today. Um, we're going to touch on uh, uh, these few things here. Um, we're going to talk about some tools you may know, some tools you don't know of, some of my uh, standby tools, and then some of uh, some tools that I use that are a little bit outside of the box. So again, if you have any questions, just uh, ask through the messaging messaging app. And I'll do a little spot check here. Can everyone hear me? But we'll keep going. We'll keep going. So. So we're going to be searching the web today, um, and I can control the web as, as really as much as I can control the weather. So my little disclaimer, um, we're going to be taking about 40 minutes today to talk about those tools from the, from the overview slide. But as we do it, it's going to be online. So um, if it's something that's not safe for work, if it's inappropriate, we'll click out of it, scroll away from it, whatever. Um, but uh, just know, I mean, it's the internet. You never know what you're going to get, and sometimes you can bleed from the eyeballs with some of the silly things we see. Um, and we'll just we'll just move past it, okay? So a little bit of disclaimer: don't uh, send me angry tweets or anything like that. Um, so uh, yeah, if you guys want to do any live tweeting, I don't know if you live tweet with uh, with your with search wizards, just hashtag search wizards if you like something uh, that you hear today. Uh, additionally, we are recording this webinar, so you can uh, use it again in the future. Uh, if you can uh, use it, you can go back and watch it again. Um, we we'll also have a handout with everything that I referenced today. All tools, uh, blogs, people that I referenced today, we'll send that out to you guys uh, once we're done as well. So hopefully you can take something here today, bring it back to your desk, um, whether you're replacing a recruitment team, you're giving them a little extra muscle, honing your own skill, or you're just... Uh, or your pipelining talent. Hopefully you find some today you can take back. So um, right on. Let's dive into the content. So we're going to start right off with uh, Archively. Um, Archively is a really cool online tool um, developed by Perry Gorman and Cole Whippern. They're the co-founders. Um, it, again, free online service. It's kind of I think of it like an ATS Lite. Um, so many of you have worked with different ATSs. Some of you have, some of you haven't. Um, but uh, it's a really cool place where you can kind of store all the research that you do online. So if you are into pipeline building, um, the long search and the long, uh, it's the long 
I guess, recruiting cycle where it takes you six, seven times to contact somebody and it's going to be, you know, three and six months because it's a senior level folk or um, maybe somebody that uh, they just want to really bring on board. It's a good way to keep in touch and make some notes. Um, and then additionally, Archively doesn't, doesn't uh, they don't talk about it very much, but it also, uh, whatever data that you store in there, it'll also crawl additional links. I'm going to show you a live example of that in a second. Um, and they have a really cool Chrome extension, which we'll get into uh, in a bit. So, um, yeah, well, let's, let's go ahead and jump live. And so this is the home page right here. So uh, somebody hit me on the messenger and make sure that, we, that you can see this screen. Cool. Thank you very much, viewer two. I appreciate it. So uh, this is where you can uh, log in. This is where you can create an account. It's pretty cool. Let me, let's show you the dashboard. This is my test account. So this is where I, uh, I have two accounts. I do one for testing and one for my, for my pipelining. So um, yeah, so you can, this, right here, your homepage, this is the most recent people you viewed. Everybody say hi to Miranda. Um, you can, uh, and you see how they're, they're tagged. I'll show you that in a second. So you can search all your profiles here, just right off the top. Um, you can search all of your profiles here that you that you've uh, that you're storing. Um, and something else that's really cool is they have collections. So if you've uh, if you're familiar with hashtags or blog tags, you can tag each individual person. We'll take a look at um, this guy, Mark Thomas Jr. So this guy, uh, I, I I saved him in, in Archively. And it pulls some uh, some of the user tags as you uh, let's get that out of the way. Like right here, so he's from California Electric Engineering. These two are my tags. You can add your own tag, and this is pulled from actually uh, from LinkedIn. So this is a really cool way to separate your data. And I'll show you my collections here. The, again, this is my test site. So um, for instance, let's look when California. So working with Northrop Grumman, I have a lot of uh, engineers that are out of California. So um, I've uh, I've pipelined a few of those folks. And as you can see, like I was talking about earlier, um, these guys are, uh, I pulled their profiles from pretty much basically LinkedIn or Facebook, one of the two, stored them here, and uh, it'll scrape other URLs that are on the site and, uh, and uh, store them here for you as well. So let me show you a good example. I'll just bring up um, my profile. So I added this profile in a test uh, from my LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn, it pulled my Facebook, it pulled my Twitter. Um, and then uh, I think I had my cell number public at one point in time. So it's somewhere floating on the internet. So it's actually harvesting data wherever it can find. Um, and it does a little bit of sourcing for you. Um, and it, pulls all the web pages that you reference. Um, and as you can see, it's a really good way to kind of uh, check out what somebody else is doing. So there's my About Me page. So if you can't get a hold of them on LinkedIn and you can't get a hold of them through uh, a cell phone or whatever, just another way to, to message folks is on About Me. Um, and it scraped all these. And it also brought these, these, uh, these websites here. And it brought it back to the account. So even an old Visify, I think that's, that's gone away. I'd scrape that as well. Pulled my Pinterest account. So it's really cool. Um, it works better for folks who are more uh, social. If they're, on, if they're online and they're available and they, they actually put the breadcrumbs that we typically look for as sources and recruiters, um, if it puts those breadcrumbs out online, it'll, it'll, it'll pick them up and bring them back to here. And then additionally, it'll continue to spider out and crawl more sites if they're, if they're available. So um, workspaces is uh, this is a pro feature. Um, I, I'm not going to get into that because one, I don't have the pro account, and two, I, I kind of use Archively a little bit different um, than it's designed. So uh, I really like the tags. I really like the, co the collections. And again, it's a free account, so it's, uh, it's uh, pretty sweet as far as I'm concerned. Um, another cool thing is there's an import and export. So let's say what you can do, actually, you can import all of your LinkedIn folks. So um, if you got folks for uh, whatever you're looking for that's on LinkedIn, if you're doing pipelining through LinkedIn, you can export all of your contact data, sort it in a, in a Excel uh, CSV file, 
and upload it here with a with a, and then tag it and I'll show you we're gonna dive into how to do that in a, in a little bit but um, yeah it's a really cool feature and then once you're done if you if you're just want to update your your ATS or wherever you can export all this data that you found online and drop it into your ATS system um, and then also within these profiles you can also add attachments and attach a file and there'll be a resume there as well so uh, the export function is for basic information only it's for like uh, uh, just what you see for collections for a name phone number email address things like that so the actual file is a, is a different way to, to export but you still have it um, and that's a simple uh, click away and uh, click away download upload however your ATS functions so that's a quick overview of Archively. And we're going to come back and talk about Archively in a second. Um, I want to talk about searching with Facebook. So um, there's a lot to do on Facebook. It's a little time consuming if you're actually using Facebook. But the goal is um, this is data. It is a lot of it. Um, we have to figure out a way to harvest it and mold it into something useful. And so I think that's where a lot of uh, recruiters and, and uh, sorcerers struggle sometimes. You know, uh, they sometimes don't want to do a message out outreach on Facebook. Plus, it, it's actually kind of hard to search unless you have other tools. Um, but I, hopefully, I'm going to show you a few ways today that will make it a little bit easier to, to, to search. Um, and hopefully, you, you'll start using it and, and mining that data as well. Um, Todd Davis, uh, is a uh, he wrote a blog about friend counts. So he actually had a... Uh, uh, an actual uh, search run with his personal Facebook and then a Facebook that he had just created and so keep that in mind when you search through Facebook your friend counts matter so think of it like um, second and third connections in uh, in LinkedIn you can only see so much of the network because of uh, of your of your uh, of your connection so think about it that way too when searching through Facebook so um, so let's uh, first I want to show you this piece I'm a big fan of understanding that the, the the technology behind the tool or understanding what's what's going on in the back end right if you understand that you can use this tool or technology um, to its to its fullest capability and, or you can use it for something that was completely not intended right so uh, I'm not going to dive too deep into this but uh, Blages Parkache he um, when graph search went away there used to be awesome filters on the right side where you can filter almost everything you want. That went away, um, and everybody was kind of up in, up in arms about it. But he looked and figured out that it's a URL pattern, um, which is essentially set theory. Um, again, I'm not going to – you'll bleed from the eyeballs if we go through this all together. But take your time. I really strongly suggest that you guys read through this and understand the, uh, the search behind it. Um, this will also be linked in the, uh, uh, in the handout as well. Definitely go back, uh, check it out, and um, understand that that functionality. So uh, let's go to Facebook. And so this link will also be uh, shared with you guys as well. So this is, if you look down here, there's still some ways to filter it, but this this is uh, not easily accessible. Um, you, it's essentially designed for you to find more of your own friends, but I kind of use it um, for for recruiting. So um, what I'm doing is. Uh, you can add names, search by name, search by hometown, current city, schools, college, employers. Um, so let's run through a live example. So for instance, let's say uh, I want to find, let's go with uh, somebody that's currently in Aurora, Colorado. That's a big uh, space and mission systems place. Definitely somebody that we can use, uh, that we can find, uh, that we can use at uh, Northrop Grumman. I don't want to see somebody that works from Raytheon. And it's cool because you can senior manager, so you're already starting to pop up folks here. It's pretty cool because you can add uh, multiple uh, multiple companies here. So you can do Raytheon, you can do Boeing, drop Lockheed Martin in there. And now you're looking like you have software engineers from Lockheed Martin. That's somebody I definitely want to talk to. Typically, if they're in this area, um, they're probably attached to mission systems, and that's something Northrop Grumman needs. 
Um, so know, know what you're looking for as well as far as lo locale, uh, if it's uh, applicable to what you're searching. Um, yeah, so the good thing is you can add multiple companies, you can add multiple cities. Um, most of these roles are in Los Angeles, so it's cool if I find their hometown and I put uh, Los Angeles, or even I can put in their, uh, ah, Junior Seha. I can put in their uh, Redondo Beach. That is, a, that is like a suburb. Um, I got a question and it says, uh, have you hired anyone through Facebook? And then another question, the ability to help find diversity, that's absolutely right. Diversity candidates, absolutely. Um, and to answer the other question, have I, I actually have, I hired a, uh, a pharmacy uh, compounding pharmacist manager. So pharmacists are pretty general. Finding compounding pharmacists are a little bit harder. It's a specific background. And then finding compounding pharmacist manager is, uh, that's even harder. But yeah, I have made hires through Facebook. Um, I actually use the messaging system but uh, I'll, I'll dive into that in a second. But uh, so if we're looking for the cool thing about using your, your, uh, your hometown is if I know I have roles that are in Redondo Beach, LA, the greater LA area, I find them elsewhere and say, hey, you wanna come home? Essentially, right? There's all kinds of ways. So, so, so all kinds of ways you can do this. So think about the different outreach messages, the different ways you can engage these candidates instead of, your, instead of the typical, hey, we have a job, click here to apply and hit them with a couple of job descriptions. That's what we don't wanna do. Um, so we got to think outside of the box a little bit on that. So this is a cool way to do it. And so typically, you know, you can run through somebody's profile. Again, this is where my disclaimer comes in. If you, you know, if he's got something inappropriate, we'll get out of it. Um, you can see if maybe they, you know, you can probably look and see. But most people keep this locked down. Facebook's made it a lot easier. So uh, typically, it's, it's, it's you're not going to glean much. But what you can glean from this, if you really like this guy's background you can uh, maybe look for some conversation pieces. Like, hey, I see you're from uh, Los Angeles. How's the mountains treating you? You're sick of sh shoveling snow or whatever. Um, but you can also message them here as well. Uh, it'll show up in the other folder. And for those of you who don't know, I'll show you uh, an other. Here's a guy that, uh, ah. Uh-oh, let's go back. Sorry about that. So here's your other folder. So you actually have to click it to make it th to actually make a conscious effort. And a lot of people don't. They just look at their messages and all. But this is the uh, the compounding pharmacist guy that I hired actually. So uh, and that was for another company when I was not working for Northrop Grumman. So you can message him here. Kind of look for some conversation pieces if you want. Um, maybe see who his friends are. But it's really slow. It's not the best uh, use, I would say, of time unless you have the time. So. Um, you can even, if you're really lucky, you can right click it and uh, search this, uh, search Google for this image. Um, and if it's pretty unique, it'll come up. But typically that's also something that's not really, it's not really effective. So this is another reason why people kind of shy away from Facebook. It takes a lot of time and it's not very effective. So I went back to the data. How do we harvest that? Um, and I'll show you that in, uh, in one second. So that's Facebook uh, without using any special tools. So interesting interesting i like the uh the filters on the side i think uh, another user was talking about diversity hires that is a big reason to use facebook for sure so um yeah so anyway so let's look at the tools that we're going to talk about um and here's my kind of my standing mindset right before we jump into the tools specifically um knowing how they work knowing how to get by without them is key uh, when you're so sourcing on social media, it's really a secondary and tertiary form of identifying candidates to engage. Um, you should be going the typical recruiting 101. ATS, the stuff you pay for, job boards, if you have the convenience of them. Um, use LinkedIn Recruiter if you have the convenience of that. Um, but uh, just do your normal, uh, I guess, your, your pattern of search. So know how to get by without tools for sure. Um, your standard way of, of a ground game getting on the phone and contacting people, email, texts, text, whatever, um, that's the best way to do it. Understanding the results behind the tool. So a good example is Johnny Campbell and um, Social Talent. They have a really great sourcing tool. You tell them, you kind of type in what you want, um, and it does it all for you. Well, if you don't know how it works on the back end, you don't know if the results you're looking at are right. So a good thing about it. And then, of course, we're going to talk about Reportive in a second. Um, it's actually gotten a little bit better since LinkedIn has bought them out. But when Reportive was around before they got bought out by LinkedIn, it was kind of, it was great. Um, LinkedIn bought them out, and then it kind of went away, and now it's coming back. So 
tools change, so don't rely on them, but they're really awesome when you can, we can use them at the, the peak of their effectiveness. So now to the tools. Um, here are my mainstays, uh, Profit, Connectifier, and Extensity. These three I want to talk about. I have more, than, more tools that are my mainstays, but uh, we, uh, we want to we stay compressed for time. So these three are what we're going to talk about really quickly. So if you know about them, great. If you don't, um, let's, uh, let's take a look. So I got to give a big shout out to Dean DaCosta for Extensity. He showed me this one here. And so Extensity is a simply, it's just a little uh, a bar. These are all my tools and everything that I use, my apps and all that stuff. Um, and essentially it's just on and off buttons, right? There's 360, 360 Social, that's a contact identifier, uh, Connect6, Connectifier, Discoverly. All these are, uh, all those that I just mentioned are data um, uh, their uh, contact identification tools. So they're really cool to use, um, but you can't use them all at once. They, they kind of fight in the background. You get skewed as, skewed results. So our, um, excuse me, Extensity is a good way to turn them on and turn them off. So for those of you who have never seen Connected Fire in action, let's turn it on. And let's go to uh, LinkedIn really quick. And let's go to, let's find somebody's profile. Let's go with, let's, why not? Let's go to Doug Galbraith. So Connectify is a little pop-out right here. And as you can see, it, uh, it populates information. So if this information is on his LinkedIn profile or wherever other places that Connectify searches, it brings it back for you to, for you to use. Now, this isn't always 100% accurate, but if you just stumble across a LinkedIn profile or um, Google Plus or uh, Twitter or wherever. And I'll show you another more built uh, built out profile of all the places that it looks. But uh, you have contact uh, contact information all right here at, at the click of a button. Connectifier has also come out with their own database that they're uh, that they're they uh, they put all this information in so you can actually search it kind of like a job board. So it's uh, something that you can check out as well. Um, so let's go. I'll show you a, a more built out profile. Uh-oh, sorry guys, let me do this. Okay, you, we should be looking at a LinkedIn page now. How's it look? Somebody tell me on the, on the chat. Awesome, cool. So we're looking at uh, LinkedIn right now. So. Um, sorry about that. Thanks for the heads up. Appreciate it. So um, let's look at a full, let's look at Steve Levy. Those of you who know Steve, he's a, a great recruiter um, and very brash, but sometimes you need that. So here's here's its full build out. So you, you have uh, GitHub, Stack Overflow, Andy's List, About Me, um, websites. So this is a more fully built out one. So people, that, again, that are more social, it's going to work uh, work a little bit better, right? So I think he deleted that Instagram account as well. But uh, beside the point. So that is Connectifier, um, pretty cool tool. The other one I was talking about was uh, Profit. So it does the same thing, but it's different results. So think of it like searching uh, Google and then searching DuckDuckGo or Yahoo with the same search for different results. Think about that, that same kind of uh, thought process. So we'll turn off Connectifier using Extensity, and we'll turn on Profit. And let's refresh the page. Every time you turn on and turn off and change tools, it's important to refresh the page because it, it just won't know any better. So you can see Profit is up here in the right-hand corner, and it's uh, already pulling stuff. Info Recruiting Daily, it's, yeah, we know what that is. Here's his Gmail, um, other accounts. So if something doesn't show up in uh, Profit, turn on Connectifier. If it doesn't show up in Connectifier, turn on Profit or any other of the contact info. Uh, generating tools that you have. Um, you can connect your Gmail to it as well, but uh, you know it's going to harvest your your uh, your information like anything else you connect your Gmail to. So if you're a little uh, squeamish about sharing data, then uh, you know I don't recommend it. But um, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, they can have my email address. Uh, it's fine. It's out there for everybody to find. So um, that is profit. And so I want to show you the archively function. So uh, let's say we're looking for uh, a purple squirrel whisperer like Steve. 
Um, Archively has an extension as well. All these are running in Chrome, by the way. My apologies, should have led with that. We can uh, click this and you can start adding stuff. So you, uh, if you get an email address here, copy it, click the Archively link, it'll pop back up and you can start populating information uh, as we sit. Uh-oh, I should have copied the email address. But uh, you can type it in here, type in any phone numbers, type in some notes like should contact or whatever. Um, save it, and then you can automatically view it in Archively. And here you go. And eventually it'll start crawling all of his links and getting his pictures in here and everything like that. So that's the Archively extension. It's pretty useful if you plan on using this uh, like it's normally designed. And then, of course, we're going to talk about the uh, Facebook UID scraper. There's a lot of buzz about this in the recruiting realm. Um, I, I think it's a pretty useful tool, especially if you decide to uh, pattern this with uh, with other tools that are out there. Um, so it sits right here. Uh, you can turn it on, turn it off, just like anything else in Chrome with Extensity. Um, when you click the, uh, the icon, it's going to pull up this. Now, this uh, software was designed by Shane McCusker. And the developer for the, the original developer for Facebook UID had a different uh, platform here. But since Shane McCusker made it look all pretty from uh, intelligent software, um, he just gave him some credit and they, they worked something out. But uh, this is where you can really get um, in uh, with more specificity when you're searching. So let's go with, um, let's, get, let's say we're going to look for recruiters. So you type in a current job. And these are your different searches that you can look for. They liked whatever page or their current job is, their past job, all jobs, current or past, where they live, where they were previously, languages that speak. So interesting about language. If you're an IT recruiter, you can look for um, someone that speaks and then put in your specific, uh, put in your specific um, language. So that's pretty cool if you're looking for IT folks. But for, the, for this example, let's go with a recruiter. And let's say they are currently living in Houston. Right? Click run. And it runs through your Facebook. And here you can see these are all people who self-identified to be recruiters that have uh, lived in Houston. Um, this window on the right will pop up. And you can... Uh, you can go back to your other your other list that you have here, or you can create a new one. Um, let's uh, let's create a new one. I think I actually may have uh, I think I actually may have uh, that list started, but anyway, click get UID, and it'll start scraping, and it'll your number count will be over here. Um, it's going to pull the uh, the information that that. Facebook has, so it's going to be their Facebook email address, first name, last name, um, and their and their user their user ID, right? Um, the user ID was important when they first came out with their messaging system before they gave everybody Facebook uh, email that you could contact people through the messaging system on their user ID. So, um, but now that this scrapes done, I'll let you know it's done. You open it up, and it looks a bit jumbled, but this is what you end up getting. So you have the full name here. Margaret Marguerite Stanford actually used to work with her. Um, Clarence Foster, you have their full name and you have an email address, right? So great, Facebook UID is awesome, but what can you do with it? Well, there's a couple things. Um, first, let's talk about Archively. With their import, with their import uh, function, you can actually, Remember, we're talking about the import function. You can actually upload this information and drop it into Archively, and it'll start spidering out and looking at all the other information that's out there. I use recruiters as an example because it's uh, uh, they're typically more more social. They have more accounts. They're more uh, easier to get a hold of. So keep that in mind for your audience. So if you're looking for like me, if you're looking for engineers with uh, security clearances, it's it's probably going to be a little little tougher to find uh, extra information. So um, so let me show you an example. You can download their uh, you can download their data import and we're going to import one. We're going to import this right now. Um, 
you can upload this here and it'll give you a it'll give you an example but I've already I have already done one just for time I sorted the data it wants you to uh, search it wants you to label it by first name and last name I've done this already so what I'll do is uh, upload this to Archively. So you can, and by the way, really quick, I'll show you how to sort the data. So um, you have it here. Insert a few cells. Select the cell here because they want you to, remember, they want you to separate by first, middle, and last name. Go to data. Text the columns. and delimited and pick space so it'll show you how it's going to separate it click next click finish and now you just copy and paste the names in the appropriate function so here's your first name and there's your last name so that's how we did it. i did that for you guys already and sorted it made it all pretty um, so let's go ahead and upload it and we'll uh there's a question that says how is the uid uid useful here that's my question. I, I don't find the UID, the UID actually useful. What I do find useful is their first name, last name, and their email address that's tied to a Facebook account. So I'm, I basically merged the Facebook UID and merged Archively. I put those tools together um, to get a pipeline, and I'll show you really quick. Absolutely, no problem. So we're going to pick a file which is, uh, you can, and this is pretty cool too, you can, if you have files on your Dropbox, Google Drive, wherever, they're really, they're really, uh, really useful to pull from there, but um, we're gonna choose a file from the computer, desktop. And remember those collections, this is where you can start, uh, those tags, the collections, whatever. Um, so you can put recruiter, And then we'll put Houston, and we click import. And remember, it's important. It's got to be in a CSV file. So it takes a few minutes to import, um, but once it does, it, it, uh, it'll start spidering out and looking at all the different stuff that's out there. So uh, a good example. It takes, sometimes it's pretty quick. Sometimes it's, it's a little bit slower. But uh, let's go with task so i i would did a test for task so I, this is another facebook scrape so i uploaded i did the same thing that i just did for houston recruiters except i did it for engineers that work at task it's a it's a company that we definitely need a skill set that we can pull from if we're a competitor the direct competitor for north of bremen um, and it started pulling other things it started pulling their twitter um, but again as you can see engineers are not very uh, they're not on the social especially these folks who have security clearances actually told them not to so um, whatever information that I can pull quickly, uh, viewer 26, correct. All the emails, remember, this is what I pulled from the Facebook UIDs. Correct, and viewer 26 also said, does it mean with Facebook? So you can actually take these emails right here and uh, mail merge them or send them individual emails from your Outlook account or from your Gmail or whatever you're working with, and it'll show up in their, out, in their folder, so remember, you have the messages folder here and it'll show up right here so it's kind of good but kind of not but you know you just have to see if they'll look at the uh, zip profiles absolutely I've heard of that I've not played with it so um, connect with me uh, whoever viewer 29 is um, I'd take a couple pointers I've never played with it but I have heard of it um, yeah so just remember when you email people in Facebook it'll be uh, in the other file so you got to hope that they'll check that and Honestly, people do, especially if they're pretty active on Facebook. So here's an example of uh, what one looks like once it's all built out. Viewer 24, no, they all don't work at Facebook. No, these, these folks don't work at Facebook, but you can email them through here. This is essentially sending them a message. So, um, but yeah, that's why I'm uploading all of this. So I take the URL, or excuse me, the UID. Yeah, it's pretty organized, Viewer 29. So um, take the UID uh, Excel spreadsheet, drop it into here, and then let it do the work for you. 
So let's see if it's uh, gotten a chance to figure out the recruiters. Here we go, 139 recruiters. So they've already pulled all the Twitter accounts, and I'm sure they'll pull more. That's a weird one. Um, Alberta Watt, if you ever see this, this in Central, not you. You're not weird. This is weird. Anyway, moving along. Um, so, yeah, so it's already starting to pull pictures. It's already pull, starting to crawl the profiles. And typically, after about a day, it's, is when it uh, reaches its, its max. Uh, if it's in the message account, where does this show up? So uh, that last question was, if you send him a message to the Facebook account, he asked, uh, or he or she asked, where does it show up? Um, it shows up in the in the other in the uh, in your messages, but it's in the other folder, like I like I've shown. Yeah, thanks for nineteen. Um, but yeah, thanks for the question. So this is how I'm using it. Um, it's pretty cool. It's not designed to be used this way, um, but uh, you know, if you can figure out a new way to use something to really focus in on all that data on Facebook. And then additionally, if it's going to go and find other accounts for you, um, why not use it? And yeah, so exactly, uh, the last viewer, uh, viewer 20 was saying that the chances of them seeing it, it really just depends on how they, on um, on uh, on that specific person. If they're active on Facebook, I check my other messages maybe once a month, right? Or sometimes even, so it just depends on what's going on. So it just depends on the individual person. So. Anyway, so that's how I'm utilizing both Facebook Graph Search and Archively together. If you're pipelining for recruiters, I know that uh, Search Wizards is always looking for recruiters. Um, you can essentially just pull lists and lists and lists and lists of recruiters and just start uh, uploading them to uh, Archively, essentially. And the more the more active a, uh, a more, the more active a, um, uh, a recruiter is, the more accounts they'll have which means it's easier to get a hold of. And they'll probably be, be uh, willing to listen. So um, just keep in mind of your audience, for sure. For sure, keep in mind of your audience. So cool beans. So we just covered extensity. We covered Connect the Fire. We covered profit. What's the percent? I'll get back to that question in one second. Thank you, viewer 19. Um, we'll get back to... Uh, those questions in a second, but uh, we covered the extensity extension, connect to fire, profit, Facebook, archively. Um, we showed you how we put the Facebook UID scraper together with archively. It's a little, it's a little more advanced. So if you need some help, I'm, I, I have no problem giving you a hand with that uh, on the side. Um, and here we'll talk, we have some time. I've been moving through this pretty quick. So I want to talk about these few tools. Now, a couple of them, they're uh, you know they're not as sexy as the uh, the, uh, the 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 data finding tools like Profit, Connected Fire. But I tell you what, these tools here have helped me out in a pinch. So um, I'm going to ask a question to you guys out there uh, listening. So who here has ever text candidates using text to get a hold of, connect with, and engage candidates? Because I don't know about you guys, I I detest checking my voicemails. So anybody who wants to get a hold of me, they uh, they text me or hit me on G plus. So if you're 24, no. Using a text, yes, correct. Using a text message to engage people. Um, okay, no, no, no. Okay, okay. I so again, think about your audience. Viewer twenty six does awesome, great job. So think think about uh, after the initial conversation. Viewer twenty nine agreed, agreed. I've actually used it to get a hold of folks initially because um, again, a lot of people hate checking the voicemail. But um, think about using text in the future. Think of who your audience is. Think of who they are. Um, if they're more apt to use text, but my my Gma text nowadays, right? So if she is doing it, most people are. So the average response rate, or actually open rate of a text, is extremely high. I think I saw some numbers out there that uh, uh, the open rate of a text is sitting in the in the low 90s, where the open rate of an email is sitting in the mid 60s to high 75 percentages. So it just depends on you know who's compiling data and what their study was. But I urge you, give texting a try. I'm going to show you how to uh, how to text folks um, without having to cram your uh, fingers into your phone keypad. So Google Voice and Google Hangouts together, merge them together. Not only can you text someone, but you can actually, it'll actually snoop for you. So if you put in a, a phone number that no one's ever, you know, they're not returning your phone calls, you really want to get a hold of them, um, I'll show you how to drop it into Google Hangouts compile it, put together with Google Voice, and it'll actually search their Google, they'll search for their Google profile um, 
and uh, you can also text them from there. Google Translate, I use that all the time, and I'll show you in a second. Session Buddy, if you've not heard of it, uh, it's pretty cool. You know what, let's just dive in. Let's get rid of you, get rid of you. Let's spell today. So I'm going to turn on my Google Hangouts. Um, so this is uh, an extension that's for uh, all of – ah, thanks, Jason. Cool, man. Um, this is uh, for any of your uh, messaging systems. So you have Google Hangouts. You know how you can message someone. Um, this is an extension to communicate through here. You can initiate phone calls. You can initiate video calls, et cetera, et cetera. Here is Google Voice. This is where I get a, a number. So there's a setting within your Google Hangouts that you can put these two together. And so uh, if you want to text someone, I'm going to put in this number here, 408. See how it's already starting to search right down here? Okay, that's kind of weird. Okay, that's kind of weird. Hang on, 408-775-9152. Uh, that's my buddy Dave. Um, so he has a Google Plus profile, so you can actually reach out to him here. He's registered the number, and you can send a text. So I'll text him right now. And then once you're reaching out to these folks, you can keep a conversation history. So if they get back to you the next day, or they're busy or whatever, it's it's pretty cool. And if you're if you're required to log your activity. This is a good way to do it too. Track it, and um, yeah. So remember, I have a Google Voice number uh, assigned to my Google Hangouts. Um, I'm not going to dive in too deeply on how to set that up, um, but it's pretty easy. Uh, if you need some help, hit me on uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google Plus, whatever, and I can give you a hand. But it's a really cool way to text, um, and you don't have to cram your number, your fingers into a number pad on your phone. So that's a really cool way to do it. Um, what do I want to show you next? So I will show you. Google Translate, right. Everybody's heard of Google Translate. I get it. But this is how I use it, right? So if you put in a name that you don't know how to say, everybody's been there. You don't know how to say this person's name, and you know if you, if you call them and you butcher their name, they're going to think you're a what? A salesman, bill collector, recruiter, or, or whatever. So let's look at, ha, and Dave texted me back. Awesome. So we're gonna uh oh, we're gonna take Blasius Parkeshay's name, and this is how I, this is how I figured out his name. So I'm gonna tweet him later and let him know. Um, and I'll turn my speakers up so you can hear it. If you know how to, if you would be honest, if you know how to say this name from front in the crowd, and you know how to say it right off the bat without a pronunciation, hit me in the messenger. But it's pretty tough. So Balish Parase. I'm pretty sure you guys heard that. So Balish Parase. I think I still messed up a little bit, but it's probably not as bad as if I didn't go with this from the beginning. So this is how I use Google Translate. I know it's a little silly, but man, when you engage a candidate for the first time, you get them on the phone for the first time, you can make or break your, your next step. So pronouncing their name properly is a really good way to do it. If you're a 29, thanks. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, it, it saved me a couple of times. So um, right on. And then I think uh, the last tool, oh, there's two more tools, sorry. There's uh, Session Buddy, this, this sucker right here. Session Buddy is awesome. And, uh, oh, sorry, there we go. That's Session Buddy right there. Um, I use it to save searches. Uh, so for right here, I was looking for electrical systems engineer. This is my search string from LinkedIn. These are my x-ray searches. Uh, this is my Bing search. Bing doesn't really work all that great. Um, I've been finding out. Um, I've been looking through Quora, my search here, and that you can save it, label it, and go back to it when you need it. So we, we placed somebody, um, so I didn't have to go. And then I also, I, I even get a little crazy. I look at Instagram every once in a while, right? So once you go through your normal sourcing procedure, ATS, job board, LinkedIn, social media, and then you can get crazy and look for things where you don't normally, where you normally would. So you can label them, go back to them, and save it. And it also helps save on, on memory as well. And so does Extensity. They both save on memory. So don't run a whole bunch of apps at the same time. Um, and then we're going to touch on Reportive. So if any of you have used Reportive in the past, I think, uh, oh, let's not do that. Let's go to my Gmail. So if you've used Reportive in the past, um, it was awesome. And then it went away because it got bought out by LinkedIn. 
Um, but it's come back, and I, I like it. It works well. Um, and I told uh, I have data if I can use them as an example. So here you go, report it right here. If you connect your Twitter, you connect your LinkedIn, you can send a connection request. So if you're not connected with somebody, you, and, um, uh, you can send them a request here, and you can personalize the message. Haha, <laughs> viewer 24, yeah, that guy's awesome. He's pretty awesome. Um, uh, you can connect him on Twitter here, and they've rolled out Skype as well. You can find their uh, their Skype ID. So that is a really cool, uh, a really cool uh, uh, way to use reported, and it's it's getting better, right? It's getting a lot better. Um, okay, and I have a couple minutes left, so I want to show you guys some experimentation, right? So think about what we just talked about. Um, oh, ha, ha, ha. I'll message him later. Uh, think about when we were just exporting URLs. Uh, Paul, I'm not entirely certain. I want to say Reportive has an Outlook app, but I, I, I don't tie my Outlook to it. I kind of keep it uh, separate. Um, there, there are other um, uses for Reportive, and I want to say they have it for Outlook, but I'm not, I'm not 100% on that. Um, Cool, appreciate it. Let me know and uh, find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever, Google Plus, um, and let me know. I'd be interested to know as well. So thank you for that. So think about back with Archively, right? So this is an SEO search, right? So essentially the, the deal is to, they want to check out their SE, uh, someone's SEO. They would type in the keyword that is the first 100 uh, results. So like Google, it kind of tailors results to you. This is supposedly um, outside of, uh, outside of uh, their, their um, their own messaging of how they think that you're looking for something, if that makes any sense. So Google tailors all of its results to you. Looks like it's frozen, so let's try something else. Let's go to their Yahoo one. So the key here is to put in, it's fully Boolean compatible, so put in a search, I don't know, let's go with engineer, and let's go with, um, uh, let's go with RF or antenna, right? And this is the experimentation that I was talking about. So we're looking for, uh-oh, let me fix that. We're looking for LinkedIn profiles for engineers that have RF or antenna on them, right? So we're going to scrape it, and here are the actual URLs that come to their profile. So this is my challenge to you guys. Here's a bunch of URLs for a search that we want to look for. If you upload this specifically to uh, Archively, it gives you funky results and you, it won't pull names, but it'll pull the profiles. So there's got to be a better way to do it. Also, this is data. What can we do with this? That's my, that's my, uh, my challenge to you guys. Check it out. Um, just all you got to Google is uh, URL scrapers and you're off to the races. So check out this site. We're getting close on time. So let's jump back in. We just talked about these four tools. So anybody know who Pablo Coleman is? He's a hacker. He works for Venture Labs out in Seattle, right? And he says um, that hackers' minds are optimized for discovery. I completely agree. I am by no means a hacker. I wish I were. Um, his good example, uh, his, his statement, or something he always says is, um, if you show someone uh, a gadget and they pick it up and they look at it, oh, this is an iPhone. It makes phone calls, it does text, it does Facebook. You can check, you download apps, et cetera, et cetera. They instantly know what it's used for. If you take that same gadget and hand it to a hacker, they'll say, oh, wow, this is an iPhone. I know it can do phone calls, text, apps, and all that stuff. But now what can I make it do? So when you look at new technology, you look at new search um, patterns or whatever, when you're experimenting out there in your search, Put on your hacker mindset. What can you make this tool do? What can you make this tool find? How else can you uh, use this tool, even if it's not designed for? For instance, Archively is, is why I really thought about Pablo Harmon, uh, Holman, excuse me. Um, so think about that, and I'll leave you exactly with that. So um, thanks for showing up. Thanks for uh, hanging out with me for about an hour over your lunch break or what have you. Connect with me here. Um, I'll take questions if we have any. Um, and I'll let you guys go about six minutes early. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. And uh, have a good day. And uh, we'll open the floor for questions. Hey, no sweat, viewer 30, anytime.
Great, no problem. Have a good day. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. No problem. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it.